Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video lecture from Kami Biology. In this video lecture we are going to talk about sulfonamide or we can say uh, folate inhibitor drugs or folic acid inhibitor, uh, inhibitor drugs or we can also say metabolic pathway inhibitor. Fine. So let me write metabolic pathway inhibitor inhibitor or uh, folate inhibitor folate synthesis inhibitor folate or folic acid synthesis inhibitor now the drugs which are used or the drugs uh, or we can say that this metabolic pathway inhibitor or this uh, folate synthesis inhibitor we can also call that sulfonamide sulfonamides so the drugs which are used in the sulfonamides this is the name of the group so the drugs which are used in this case we call that Sulfa Mita Sazor Sulfa Mita Sazor So I think the spelling will be right or wrong so then you will check Sulfa Mita Sazor and the next drug which are used in this Sulfa Sazor Sulfa Sazor so there are some other drugs as well but I forget the name of these drugs. So now how these uh, uh, drugs will be look like. So if we see the structure of these drugs. So these drugs will be look like in this form. So let me, let me draw the correct structure of these drugs. So if you see the structure of these drugs. So it will be look like just like in this form. So this is the structure of uh, this sulfonamide. Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of these drugs. Now before going to explain the mechanism of action of these drugs, first you need to understand that what is actually how the folic acid is synthesized or we can say how the metabolic pathway occur inside a bacterial cell and why the bacterial cell uh, use this uh, pathway. You know there is purine and pyrimidines are present these are actually the nucleotide and due to the presence of this nucleotide the bacteria will produce what the bacteria will produce dna rna because these are the nucleotide these purine and pyrimidines are the nucleotide, nucleotide and due to the presence of this purine and pyrimidine there will be a high number of what di uh, nucleotide triphosphate so how this uh, dry dinucleotide triphosphate or we can say purine and pyrimidine actually these are the pre precursor molecule as well for the or these, these are the building blocks for the DNA as well or or we can say this folic acid is actually the precursor molecule or the building blocks for what for purine and pyrimidine so how this folic acid will be formed and how this metabolic pathway will, will be occur so whenever I prepare this one topic so I saw different pathway I saw different uh, uh, means uh, structure of this pathway I saw different structure but uh, here I will draw the simple and the exact structure by which your concept will be clear so what actually happened in this case let me explain one by one so first of all a substrate which we use will be called that dihydro pyruvate plus dihydro dihydro pyruvate diphosphate diphosphate plus PABA PABA or we can also call that para amino benzoic acid para amino benzoic acid how this PABA will be look like let me draw the structure of this PABA this PABA will be look like in this form H 
So this is the structure of the papa. These two are actually what? These two are actually the substrate. These two are what? These two are actually the substrate. So when these two substrate are uh, are added with, with each other and when they bind or when they mixed with an enzyme we usually call this enzyme what? We usually call this enzyme di hydro proate synthetase synthetase so with the with the presence of this enzyme this substrate and this one substrate means this PABA and this dihydropetroate diphosphate will bind with the active site of this enzyme so when they bind with the active site of this enzyme so then we get a product we usually call that dihydropetroic acid di hydro petroic acid so then we get the dihydro petroic acid so from this dihydro petroic acid we further get what we further get dihydrofolate we get di hydrofolate or we can say dihydrofolic acid as well so no, this dihydrofolate or this substrate is then again react with an enzyme or they attack or they react with the active site of an enzyme we usually call this enzyme what dihydrofolate dihydrofolate reductase so with the presence of this dihydrofolate reductase so they this enzyme have active site by which this one uh, substrate or we can say dihydrofolate will be easily bind and then we get another another product we usually call that tetrahydrofolate tetra hydro folate so then we get tetrahydrofolate and from tetrahydrofolate finally what we get we get the we get the purine or pyrimidine we get purine and pyrimidine we also call it nucleotide or then uh, after that we get the DNA or we get the RNA and then from this process we get the replication transcription translation and all things will be occur after that so this is the exact or this is the basic pathway of this metabolic or we can say this is uh, or we can say this is how the folate will be synthesized or this is how the folic acid is synthesized this folic acid as i told you is the precursor molecule or the building blocks for what are uh, the building blo blocks for the purine and paramitine now if we see the diagrammatically so what actually happens so let's suppose this is the enzyme this is the ectocyte so due to this presence of this active sites so these two substrate means let's suppose this is the one substrate means we call it dihydropetroate diphosphate and this is another substrate we usually call it PABA so they can easily bind or they can easily react with this active site so once they bind with this active site so let's suppose this is what this is the enzyme so once they bind with this active site so what we get we get a enzyme substrate complex so this is the enzyme substrate complex and then we get what we get the we get the product so this is the product we get the product means we call that dihydropetroate acid dihydropetroic acid we get this one uh, product so this is the first uh, means this is the diagrammatically representation 
Now let's talk about the mechanism of action of the drugs. What actually the drugs do? This sulfonamide is actually a competitive inhibitor drugs. These are what? These are actually the competitive 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 inhibitor inhibitor now why we call that competitive inhibitor because the concentration of this sulfonamide is a very high so due to this high concentration of sulfonamide these drugs compete with this two uh, substrate means we call that dihydropetroate diphosphate and PABA when they compete with these two substrate so let's suppose this is the drugs let's suppose they compete with these two substrate so once they compete with these two substrate so this one drugs means this drugs will easily bind so this drugs will easily bind so let's suppose this is the drugs so they can easily bind with the active site of what with the active site of this enzyme so they can easily bind with the active site of this enzyme. So once they bind with the active sites of this enzyme, so the enzyme function will be lost. So when the enzyme function will be lost, when these two substrates are not bind to this active site of the enzyme, and when this active site of the enzyme is halted, or, or, or we can say when this active site of the enzyme is kept by these drugs, so then the product will be not formed we can say dihydropetroic acid so when this dihydropetroic acid will be not formed so then the rest of the process will be also halted or the rest uh, rest of the process will be formed but it is very low amount or we can say low formation of purine and pyrimidine or we can say nucleotide so definitely there will be low amount of DNA RNA so low amount of the protein and other uh, material which are present with the drugs will be in a low amount so we can say all the process will be halted so this drugs is actually we also called it that these drugs are what these drugs are actually bacteriostatic bacteriostatic so these drugs is, are the bacteriostatic in nature why because they can stop the growth of bacteria as well so that's all the mechanism of action of these drugs now let's talk about the uh, antibacterial spectrum of this drug so what are the antibacterial spectrum of this drug so if we talk the antibacterial spectrum spectrum so if we talk the antibacterial spectrum so this drugs will be activated against actinomycetes Toxoplasma Coxidia Nocardia So these are the bacteria which are affected with by using these kinds of uh, drugs fine so that's all about the mechanism of action of these drugs the structure of these drugs the pathway of the metabolic pathway uh, means the uh, uh, folate synthesis so that's all about the folate synthesis and as well as the mechanism of action of these drugs i hope you understand about that video inshallah in the next video we will be talking about the resistance which are activated against these drugs in a detail so please stay tuned and continue to watch the rest of the videos thank you so much